Hi, welcome back for another book talk. So today I'm going to try something a little bit tricky, which is discuss a sequel to a fantasy. Um, I did discuss the first book in the fantasy back in April. So spoilers. <laughs> I will do my best not to have spoilers for either the first or the second book, but you all are being warned. If you do not follow my advice and read the first book, you're lost. So if you do want to read this book, turn this off, come catch me later after you read the first one, okay? So I want to talk to you about the first book. It, I love it. I read it two times last year. No, maybe more than two times, um, but it was a year ago. And it is There Will Come a Darkness by Katie Rose Poole. It is a finalist for the 2020 William C. Morris um, Award. And the William C. Morris Award, as a reminder, is given to the best debut YA author. And Katie Rose Poole was one of five finalists and just being a finalist is an award itself um, because you are plucked amongst all of the other books that come out um, and there is a great reason for it. Her book, uh, when I first read this book, I could not put it down. Um, I picked it up, I think, over Thanksgiving weekend and uh, I might have emerged to eat turkey. I don't remember. And what I love about this, well, first of all, those of you who know me know I love fantasy. I read, I read all genres, but um, fantasy has been my jam since fourth grade with Will Hagen introducing to me uh, The Hero and the Crown by Robin McKinley. And what I really loved about this are a few things, which are continued in the sequel that came out um, this August I'm going to share with you. One is it is told from alternating perspectives. So each of the major players in this book gets a role to speak. And Katie does a really good job of creating complex characters that break the mold for most fantasy tropes. Um, certainly there is a major quest that is happening, but each one of these characters has their own individual journeys that they are working on. And so and I'm not slamming Lord of the Rings here, but unlike Lord of the Rings in which you see, um, you know, this journey that they're on and, and you know that they're all undertaking different journeys too, because it's not told like in this omniscient voice, you get to really feel and know who the characters are in a more intimate way. And she has a great way of just sort of leaving off at a great spot where you want to know what's happening, but you may have to wait like for another four character point of views before you get back and each character point of view is often left off that way um, and so you just want to read more the second thing that I like about what she discusses is that her overall topic is something I feel many of us can relate to and I'm just going to do a brief recap for those people when it comes to this book Okay, but I'm going to switch over to the book I'm actually talking about. So the first book, for those who have not read it, There Will Come a Darkness. And you do need to read the first book before you go to the second. Okay, her third book, which is the last in the series, is going to come out next October. So uh, October, sorry, next August 2021. Okay, so people get caught up. So... The shadow rises as the shadow rises. And I do want to do a quick side by side so you can see the lovely graphic design. Um, you can tell that they are paired. Um, but I love the brilliant uh, vermilion that we have against the black because it feels like blood, right? Like, whew, okay, not good, not good, not good. Okay. Um, so this still is alternating characters and in this world in this kingdom we have the grace and the ungraced it does sound bad right when you say un something mm. and my favorite comparison to this at least when i talk about the books is the sneetches from dr seuss and it's about uh of course some sneetches have stars on their bellies and others don't have stars upon theirs okay 
and others become jealous. Why do they get stars, right? And, and the stars don't necessarily imbue them with any special powers. But a man comes along with this machine and he starts taking stars off of some, putting stars on the other to the point where none of them remember who originally had stars and who didn't. But to me, the idea of it when I was a kid, and it's still my favorite Seuss book today, is the differences that exist and why people seem to feel angry um, about the fact that, well, you, you're more elitist, right? Um, you walk around like you have more. And in this world, the graced do have more. Um, and it's because of the powers that they are imbued with, because they are powers. Um, and they are graced by, in their belief system, what is known as the prophets. So there are four different graces. You have the grace of mind. Um, and the grace of mind, um, it's imagine like, for example, people say you only use a small percentage of your brain. These individuals use all of their brain. Um, and they are absolutely brilliant at anything. Uh, science, inventions, creations, architecture, anything that they may want to do um, that involves the mind, they're brilliant at. Um, and in most of the kingdoms, in all of the kingdoms, it's the grace that rule. Um, and it may not be those with grace of mind, but it would be one of the graces. Um, and so one of the characters in here, Prince Hassan, his father had the grace of mind. Um, in the city that he was king of. Another grace is the grace of heart. Um, and the grace of heart, those individuals are phenomenal uh, warriors. Um, so they have this ability where it's like the their heart, their esha, which is like their essence, seems to flow better. Um, they have like this physical prowess, like with any kind of weapon, anything. Um, so imagine like, like sometimes like I, I, I think of, some of those, I love martial arts movies, so I think of like uh, some of those movies where you see people flying through the air and you're like, oh, come on, there's got to be strings involved, like, you know, lifting them. And there probably are in the movies. This is how they actually are. They're, it's, it's incredible how fast they move and what they can do. And nobody can stand against them. Um, then you also have the grace of blood. The grace of blood usually translates into healers um, because they're able to, if someone is sick, they're able to use their own blood, okay, their own sense of Esha and spirit um, to pull whatever is poisoned out of them and into them. And uh, I mean, obviously, uh, it makes them ill, but they have the strength and power to be able to do that. By the same token, because they have control over blood, that means that they can also drain somebody and potentially kill them. Um, but that would be against their moral um, ethics. Um, but you find out in the story that there are some that have. Um, like in history, there was someone called the Necromancer King um, who brought people back from the dead to serve in his army. Then you have the grace of sight. And the grace of sight is the ability to use um, your Esha, your, your spirit, um, and you can sense other people. Like no matter, sometimes if you're very, very strong, you can sense somebody from farther away. You can also find things, especially things that might have like a relic that might have some meaning. Um, you can find things. And if you are very strong, you could have prophetic sight. So you might be able to tell the future. Um, and we learn in, in this book, um, you can also sometimes tell the past. So the gift, the grace of sight is probably one of the rarest. Um, and in the book, in the very first book, we, we learn there is a prophecy. Um, and a last prophet. And I'm not going to tell you who the last prophet is because that's part of the first book. Um, but the last prophet is for sure found in the second book, okay? I mean, it's found in the first, confirmed in the second. And the prophecy starts to unfold. And even though it is still told from different points of view, some of our characters end up meeting together more than they did in the first book. One of the things that really drew me in is I told you I read the first book a year ago and I was like, oh, am I going to be able to remember all the characters, the world building, everything else? Katie does such a fine job of creating the world and these characters, which are so individualistic. Within the first chapter, I was in. If it wasn't for work, I would have finished this book faster. I almost considered 
oh, well, they really miss me. <laughs> I just keep reading. <laughs> um, but I, I, I went to work in case anyone from work's watching. Um, this book is captivating. Um, it is still the same beautiful writing style and the characters develop even more. And what I love about it is that in a lot of fantasy books, um, you know, when they have strong warriors and they have uh, princes, you know, they, they very rarely show another side to them like vulnerability or doubt. And that's something that you see throughout all these books is even though they're having this major quest that they have to try and do, I mean, there's a darkness that's rising according to the prophecy. And as you can tell, it, it's rising, right? This is not good. Um, part of what is difficult is that they're also wrestling within themselves against who they are. Who, who am I? Do, do I want to keep the commandment I've grown up with since I was little. And you also see a challenge to their very core belief system. And this is something that's difficult. Um, I, can, I can readily say that I think um, a lot of people who are brought up a certain way, maybe it's, maybe it's religion, maybe it's um, family you know, um, mores, um, and suddenly you grow up and, and you see something that might challenge that. And I think it's a very natural um, thing that happens to a lot of people. All of a sudden you're facing something or you're, or you're living your life and you see something that doesn't fit what you were taught. How do you wrestle with that? And at the same time, still try to keep, you know, the shadow from not rising. And so, you know, it's very hard to deal with like a, a massive quest, uh, when you have your own doubts. And it's one of the things I very much appreciated about the book, as well as the overall theme, which is what if everything you've been taught is a lie? Or what if everything you thought was true is, is full of holes? How do you bounce back? How can you be resilient? And I think for a lot of us, that's a, that's a big question is, and especially I'm thinking right now, I mean, I'm, I know Katie had her story already planned, but here we are and it, you know, it's COVID and <laughs> we're quarantined. And, um, you know, many of us know that news media goes out or people can say whatever they want. And you have, you have to look at your own belief system and wonder where am I going to stand? What am I going to believe in? How am I going to move forward? And that's a lot of what these characters have to look at for themselves too. Um, and who do I choose? Who do I choose to be with me through this, right? And I appreciate that. And I also appreciate that overall idea of the graced versus the ungraced, okay? Because this is, this is their world. And just thinking about it in logical terms, who gets to decide um, who is graced and who isn't? Um, I had a conversation with, with a couple of people who had said to me, you know, this year, like, why me, right? Some of the stuff that they were facing. Um, and I think that that's a question in the book that comes up as well is, why is that person graced? Like, why is it the graced that gets to lead the kingdom? Um, why, it, why am I the one that is down here? Um, and I think a lot of those questions are, are, are in here, the divisions between certain people. And it's not that Katie solves, <laughs> Katie, I'm not putting the burden on you. It's not that Katie sits there and solves that answer, but I love the fact that she triggers that question in many different ways. Um, and at least for me, it makes it a very excellent fantasy because it has me also examine the ideas that we are faced with every day. Um, and the character, let me just speak for the characters really fast. Um, there's a sister relationship in here that I absolutely adore. Um, sisters who would do anything for each other because that's all they have. And yet there becomes a breaking point at, um, in this novel at the end that's continuing here. And my sister's my best friend. And you have to wonder what would cause a breaking point between two people. And in this novel, there's also a healing point, a beautiful, 
romantic loving healing point and then you also see that and you're like what look at how this happens look at what causes this to happen you know how you can heal from things from trauma from your past by putting absolute faith and, and strength in somebody else and I love the way that she brings her characters together but also realistically shows that there are breaking points so please please you got to read this one if you didn't listen to me the first time listen to me again and then as the shadow rises I'm thrilled I'm so thrilled and Katie you keep rocking it uh it was awesome I have to wait till August and I guess I will content myself with reading it again and I'm excited I'm excited to see all the new things you come out with so until then get your fantasy on people if you haven't done it yet and this is a great fantasy series to start with if you are not a fantasy fan because there is adventure and beautiful characters and the alternating points of view really keeps you engaged and so give it a try give it a try you don't want to be one of those sneeches without stars on your belly or who argues about stars in the belly you just want to give something a try so until I see you next time, I wish you good health and happy reading. Thank you.